All right, now we're stepping it up to the big time. So this is a crazy problem, and you'll see why. It, it finally calls into play the issue that we need an equation with two variables, which we haven't run into. We've run into some other little issues, <clears throat> like not having particular info that you had to solve for, but that was an easy solve. This one, a lot harder. So keep your brain with you. Um, it is a pretty cool problem. All right, so new problem. Um, suppose that wood nymph, nymphs and satyrs are having a party um, and wine is flowing freely from this giant barrel that's 12 feet deep and six foot in radius. So you got this big barrel and that's its height of the whole barrel and radius of the whole barrel. <clears throat> um, if the wine is disappearing at a rate of six cubic feet per hour, so that's how fast it's coming out volume wise because cubic feet per hour that to me when i read that i'm already thinking uh dv i'm thinking that's volume prime okay that is a rate of change of the volume okay and i would be careful to make sure i put negative six cubic feet per hour so sometimes when i read these i'll write down what i think they are already um, what rate is the depth of the wine? So in this problem, the depth of the wine is H. So their question is, what is H prime? It's good to know. That's what we're looking for. In the tank going down, when the depth is 4 feet, that is just H. So we know a lot of stuff in this problem, but it's pretty hard, and you'll see why in a second, because the formula for this is weird. But step one is reading carefully. Basically, wine's leaving this, and the height is changing. What you got to think about is, <clears throat> will the height be changing at a constant rate, or will it change? Will it start change accelerating or decelerating? Sort of. If you think about it, up here, if you've ever done pour over coffee, you would notice, or pour anything in a funnel, or even watch a drain. As it gets more narrow and narrow, it gets faster and faster as it goes. It starts off, the water level doesn't go down very fast at all because it's a really big area. As you get down towards the bottom, it's smaller and smaller volume each time. So if the same trickle's coming out, it's going to get faster and faster. So the rate at which the height is changing is an ever-changing thing. At that particular time is what we want to know. Okay, so... Step two is draw a picture, but it's already drawn for us. Step three is come up with an equation. All right, so here's the problem with the equation. If I asked you what's constant in this problem, um, the radius is forever shrinking as this goes down. The height is forever shrinking as this goes down. So I can't put any numbers in. So I'm pretty much stuck with a volume of a cone. I don't know if you remember this from... Uh, geometry if you're a geometry all-star you might but <clears throat> volume of a cone is simply this formula you could look it up you know write it down on a note card or something volume of a cone is going to be one-third <clears throat> pi r squared times height now this is the first time we get in trouble because i'm not allowed to put in a number for volume because it's not a constant volume it's changing I'm not allowed to put in a number for radius because it's a it's constantly shrinking. And I'm not allowed to put in a number for height because it's constantly shrinking. So I am at an issue here because I have one, two, three variables. And if you look at any of our previous problems, we only had two variables. Like we had um, x and y on this problem. We had x and y on this problem. Okay, so here's an issue. I have to substitute and get rid of either the v the R, the H. Now I know which one I want to get rid of because of common sense. Look at this. If in my problem I'm given H and I'm looking for H prime, do I really want to get rid of H? No way. I don't want to get rid of H. Um, if I'm given information about V prime, I don't want to get rid of V either. So that only leaves one. I need to somehow replace R. I need to replace R with something. And that something comes from here. Remember how we had the similar triangles in our uh, Bigfoot problem? Where you could do like height over base equals height over base for the big triangle? Well, if you look at this, and a fun fact about a cone, 
is it doesn't matter if the cone is all the way filled up to the top, which is 6 compared to 12, or if it's at any height, it still follows the same ratio. See the similar triangle that I traced in purple? And then I could trace the same similar triangle, a bigger version in green. Very similar. Okay, so I can replace R by doing the following. I can make a fraction of 6 over 12, and I can set that equal to a fraction of radius over height. Do a little cross multiplying, yada yada. Boom, boom. 6H equals 12R. Now this is where the real pros separate themselves out. If I want to replace R, I need to get R by itself, and I can substitute it in there. Okay, so my goal here, the magic I'm doing right now, is to get right R in terms of H. <clears throat> now I can put this in right there. So I'm still on step three because I'm getting an equation, but I need my equation to be just in two letters. So I literally wrote this down, but instead of R, I replaced it with H over two because the, the radius is always half the height. Um, so now I can clean this up a little because I remember my math skills, and when I square a fraction, I square the top, and I square the bottom. And now I can put together my h's and my fractions, because um, I can do one-third times pi times, this is like one-fourth. So it's really one over twelve times pi. Pi is just a number, and I have h cubed. So for this problem, I had to do a lot of work to get that. Now the reason I got that is if you tried to do implicit differentiation here, you would have a penalty on the V, so you'd have a V prime. You'd have an, a regular R and an R prime, and you'd have an H and an H prime. So I'd have way too many variables. I would have like six variables when I was done taking the implicit derivative. I can't deal with a problem with six variables. Okay, so we have to boil it down to two variables before doing the derivative. And this comes with experience. There's not a lot of problems you have to do this for. Only if your original equation has three variables, like volume, radius, and height. Okay, now that I've done that, magic stuff, now it's pretty easy again. I need to differentiate or take the derivative with respect to t. So I'm going to d over dt everything. v, the 1 12. Um, hopefully you don't mind. I'm going to put these two together and call it pi over 12. You could still call it 1 12 pi, but I want to kind of connect those together so you don't think it's anything weirder than just a number. So I'm going to derivatize this, which is 1 v prime. I'm going to derivatize this, which is 3 times that. Um, what's 3 times 1 12, pi over 12? It's 3 pi over 12. And then h squared, and I have to pay a penalty because I took the derivative of something that's not a t. Okay, so that's just my implicit differentiation. Once again, if you haven't done that yet, I don't know what you're doing. Okay, so that simplifies a little bit. Pi over 4. Okay, now remember what these variables mean. If I see v prime, that's the, um, the rate the volume is changing. If I see regular h, that is simply the height at a particular time. If I see h prime, that is the rate the height is changing. So basically, whenever you see primes, they are rates. Okay, so this is good. So now step five is search for particular information. I kind of did that earlier as I was reading. But I didn't put it in a box, so it doesn't count until you put it in a box. Okay. I know that I'm searching for H prime. I know that I am given the volume is draining out at negative six cubic feet per hour. Um, and I put negative because 
water's leaving the tank, and I'm talking about the height of the tank. If it were filling up the tank with a hose, I would have put positive 6. Okay, and then height at that particular time is 4. I don't need to know radius at that particular time, although I could. I just plug in a 4 there, cut it in half, and I get 2. But I don't need that. I don't think I need it, because look, this is when I usually decide. Once I plug in on step 6, plug in and solve, um, I'm going to put a negative 6 here. I'm going to put pi over 4, because it's just a number. Then I'm going to put my height squared times h prime. That's what I'm solving for. If I type all my particular information in and, it's, and I only have one variable left, my goal is just get that guy by himself. So this isn't bad. It was like, you know, the only reason I had more work here was when I first solved it, there was nothing to put here. So I had to go back to particular. Um, don't do extra work on number five unless you realize in number six you need to go back there and find something else. Okay, so with this being said, I'm just going to solve that equation. Um, so, you know, negative 6 equals pi over 4 times 16 times h prime. Maybe divide both sides by 16 if you want to do it in multiple steps. And 6 over 16, or sorry, negative 6 over 16 is uh, negative 0.3. 7, 5. And then I'm going to divide both sides by pi over 4. Make sure when you do this, you put parentheses around that when you type it in. So I have this divided by parentheses pi over 4. Right? Otherwise, you could rookie that up. And you get h prime equals negative 0.477. Okay, and then I want to put word answer with this. What the heck does h prime mean? The rate at which height is changing. If you see a negative here, that means it's going down. Now I just got to figure out, are we talking feet? Are we talking miles? Are we talking inches? Um, this was in feet to begin with, for feet. Um, so my end answer for h prime will be uh, in feet per hour. So for number seven, you'd say the height... is changing, going down, at negative 0.48 feet per hour. So like half a foot an hour is its rate at that time. However, if I asked you later on, like if I put when the height is only two feet high, um, it would really change the rate. It would get faster and faster and faster as it went down. And we could do that. Like you could put a two in here and square it and you'll see um, the rate changes. The rate's going to be a, a faster amount. Anyway, that's that problem. This was more difficult. Why? Because when you look this up, and I would imagine you just look it up, volume of a cone, it has three variables. And I couldn't put any of them in because none of these three, none of these three things were constant. So I couldn't replace it with a number. So I had to do some math magic with similar triangles or substitution to get rid of one of the letters. And remember, I decided to get rid of R because the problem kept giving me information about H's and V's. So the only letter I didn't care about was R, so I could replace it. It's expendable, you know, kind of like your, your X. <laughs> oh, that's too soon. Too soon. Sorry for some of you. All right, anyway. That's it. Hope you enjoyed. It's good stuff. Related rates are pretty cool problems. We'll get better and better at these. All right, but you got to practice. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Enjoy the, enjoy your time.